This is the OTB Network. Hello everyone and welcome to this week's edition of Horses and Courses. I'm Jean Wood. An exciting weekend of racing, certainly highlighted by activities down at Churchill Downs. However, before we get to the big events, we're going to start with a trip out to the West Coast and begin at Hollywood Park for the running of the Inglewood Handicap on Saturday. Unfortunately, uh, rains force the, uh, the race off of the turf. It goes as an ungraded $100,000 mile in the 16th for older horses. Let's head to Hollywood in the running of the Inglewood. They're off. Gondolieri and Truly a Judge set out for the front. Gondolieri is a length in front. Free for internet away in third, and the early trailer is Leprechaun Kid. Truly a Judge going to deny the lead to Gondolieri, who concedes that lead now. Frank Alvarado takes a hold of Gondolieri, and so that allows Truly a Judge to be at three quarters of a length in front. Gondolieri is a pressing second, and these two have run away from the other two. Leprechaun Kid and Free for Internet are about nine lengths off the lead as they turn into the backstretch in the 63rd Inglewood Handicap. It is Truly a Judge with Gondolieri and present danger just from the outside. Truly a judge tried to take a brief breather and he couldn't do it because Gondolieri is right alongside. It is still eight or nine lengths back to Leprechaun Kid and free for internet. Two match races at the half mile pole. Truly a Judge and Gondolieri, these two quicken ever more going into the far turn. Truly a Judge, a hard-ridden leader. He just got a tap of the whip on the right shoulder. Gondolieri is taking it to him, leaving the back stretch in these two match strides. They have now put 10 lengths on free for internet. Leprechaun Kid is fourth and last, and Gondolieri forges to the lead at the top of the stretch. It is Gondolieri just getting away from Truly a Judge. He's a tight length in front. Truly a Judge under a full out ride, free for internet, draws within five of the lead and he is closing nicely but Gondolieri has the jump to mid stretch and he takes charge by two lengths. Truly a judge continues to race second free for internet is third and Gondolieri opens up and he is running a big race. Truly a judge is second Gondolieri in front. Gondolieri wins the Inglewood by a solid three and a quarter lengths. Truly a judge was second free for internet third and Leprechaun Kid finished fourth. An aggressive ride early from Gondolari and Frank Alvarado to take them to a three-length victory over truly a judge who showed good speed. Gondolari pressing him early went by him fairly aggressively. Free for internet picking up the third spot after uh, closing just a little bit of ground late in the short four-horse field. The winner, Gondolari, is a chestnut, or a bay gelding, rather. He was born uh, what seems like an odd time of the year for us in Northern Hemisphere time. My birthday, August 11th, 1999, making him a four-year-old by our time. Uh, gold tribute his sire, a Chilean uh, bay sire out of some home by summing. Very much uh, American-sounding pedigree, but he is bred in Chile by the heiress Don Alberto. Owned by Nelson Bunker Hunt, trained by Ron McAnally. Gondolieri covers the mile in his 16th under Frank Alvarado in 140 and 1. Heading back to California next for Sunday's running of the Railbird Stakes for three year old Philly sprinters going seven. Let's head back to Southern California and the running of the Railbird. They're off. Himalayan broke well and goes right out for the front. Honest answer away second. Hostility at the rail and Buffy the centerfold a close fourth. Dash for money away in fifth and the early trailer is Lucky Saber. Honest answer quicker than Himalayan up the back stretch but the two of them fly and honest answer is a neck in front. Himalayan is second. Buffy the centerfold is traveling very well. She's a tracking third and two from the front. It's two and a half lengths back to entry mate Dash for money. Hostility has seven to make up. Lucky Sabre just inside of her. There's a half mile to run in the 41st Railbird Stakes. Honest Answer in Himalayan. These two have been together since they sprung the latch and Honest Answer's a half length in front. Himalayan is second by a length and a quarter. Absolutely no excuses for Buffy the centerfold. She's three deep in the clear and less than a length from the front and there goes Buffy to make her move. Buffy the centerfold is on the move up after the lead and she's a neck from the front. Dash for money is next. Four back to Lucky Sabre 
labor and hostility, and we have a new leader. Her name is Buffy, the centerfold, and she comes charging off the top of the turn. Honest Answer is down at the rail in second. It's six back to dash for money, and Buffy, the centerfold, is straight and strong, and she takes charge. Buffy, the centerfold, Honest Answer runs her heart out, but she's second best in the rail bird to Buffy, the centerfold. Buffy did it by a length and a quarter. Honest Answer was second. Dash for Money third, and Himalayan finished fourth. Buffy the centerfold, a very nice two-year-old early last year, did have some problems late, came back with a nice effort here, running as the heavy favorite to win by a length from Honest Answer, Dash for Money. Rallies a little bit from uh, off the pace into the third spot as the entry mate of the winner. The winner, Buffy the Centerfold, is a three-year-old Bay filly, a daughter of Capote from Augusta Springs by Nijinsky. She was bred by the Overbrook Farm in Kentucky, owned by Alan, Brian Allen and Stronach Stable, trained by Mel Studi. Ridden to victory by Victor Espinosa, Buffy the Centerfold covers the seven furlongs of the Railbird in 122 and 2. We're going to head back to Aqueduct now, heading home as it were. We're going to head to the Bogey Handicap for fillies and mares, three-year-olds and up fillies and mares on the turf. The first filly stakes race of the season in New York sometimes comes up a little on the light side. Not this year, a very competitive running. Let's head to New York in the running of the Bogey. And they're off. A voodoo Dancer broke well on the extreme outside. It she's vested. A wonder again is in between horses. Cozy Corner at the rail. They straighten away now, come past the stands for the first time. And it is Cozy Corner who has the early lead. She's vested in second. Wonder again and Osley right together, third and fourth. Voodoo Dancer now racing in fifth. And Delta Princess is at the rail in sixth. It's a gap of three lengths to Dynamic Lady in seventh. Peanut Gallery is in eighth, and uh, Miss Gazon trails the field in ninth. The opening quarter over the firm turf in 23 and one-fifth seconds. Cozy Corner leads by a little more than a length. She's vested his second by a half length. Wonder again towards the inside in third, and Osley on the outside. They continue up the backstretch with Cozy Corner in front, and she's vested... Pressing the pace in second, Osley now takes third. Wonder again is in the fourth. Uh, then it's a voodoo dancer. Peanut Gallery on the extreme outside. A Delta Princess is a seventh. Then Dynamic Lady in eighth, and Miss Gazon is ninth. Half mile, 48 and one-fifth seconds. Cozy corner by a half length. She's vested, remains in second. Osley in third, and down on the inside is a wonder again. The favorite voodoo dancer is in between horses. Peanut Gallery on the extreme outside, then Delta Princess. The field comes into the stretch. Three quarters, went in one, 12 and four. Delta Princess is looking to come through at the rail. Cozy Corner is there with Wonder again. Voodoo Dancer gains ground on the outside. It is Wonder again and Delta Princess. Voodoo Dancer in third. Here's Delta Princess to win the bogey. Wonder again, second. Voodoo Dancer was third. Delta Princess moving up from Allowance Company into Stakes Company and taking on grade one stakes winners uh, in here and handling them quite nicely by a half a length as, uh, as a $17 price on top. Daughter of AP Indy moving up through her allowance conditions down in South Florida with considerable success this winter. Grade one winner, Wonder Again. Has to settle for second after running up close early. Her first race back after the uh, layoff from last season. Obviously, a filly who may have needed the race favorite in the field, Voodoo Dancer, a, uh, a mare who has always been there or about in very good competition on the turf, returning for her seasonal debut in New York to finish third as the odds-on choice. The winner, Delta Princess, is a dark bay or brown four-year-old daughter of AP Indy from Leafard's Delta by Leafard, bred in Kentucky by the Politis Investments, owned by Saud bin Khaled, trained by Bill Mott, and ridden to victory by Mike Luzzi. Delta Princess covers the mile and is 16th on the turf in New York in 142 and 1. We're going to continue with stakes racing action from New York on Saturday with the 124th running of the Withers, a flat mile for three-year-olds in grade three company. Let's head back to New York in the running of the Withers. And they're off. 
Awesome Time and Don Six and Ellie Sweep. Uh, those three go out for the lead. New York Hero is right there and moving up at the rail. And in between horses, it's Halo Home Wrecker as they move up the chute. Don Six in front. Halo Home Wrecker takes second. New York Hero at the rail. Awesome Time is on the outside in fourth, and Ellie Sweep is now in fifth. Stanislavski is sixth. Spite the Devil is seventh. The trailer is at first blush in eighth. The opening quarter was sharp, 22 and three-fifth seconds. Don Six and New York Hero, and their heads apart for the lead with Halo home record just behind in third. A length and a half to Stanislavski, Awesome Time, and Alley Sweep. But then comes Spite the Devil, five lengths to at first blush who trails. Opening half mile, 45 seconds into the far turn. It's Don Six leading by a half length. New York Hero at the rail in second. Stanislavski is third. Then it's Halo Home Wrecker in fourth, about three lengths from the lead. Alley Sweep on the outside in fifth. Then comes Spite the Devil. Awesome time has dropped back. And at first blush, and they're at the quarter pole. Don Six, the leader, three quarters in 109 and three. Stanislavski on the outside. Halo Home Wrecker in between horses. Alley Sweep is gaining ground out in the middle of the track, and Spike the Devil has a chance. Moving for the 16th pole. It is Alley Sweep, Don Six, Stanislavski, and Spike the Devil. Alley Sweep. Spite the devil, spite the devil, pulls it off at 16 to one. Ali sweeps second, close for third, Stanislavski or Don Six. Spite the devil just getting up there. Uh, the call saying just, uh, just inside the realm of possibility at the top of the stretch, and he was able to get there with a determined neck victory under Luis Chavez, Ali sweep, a nice effort to finish second, Stanislavski. Finishing third in a very close four-horse finish uh, with Don Six just missing the board by about a length and a half. The winner, Spite the Devil, is a three-year-old dark bear brown colt, a son of Devil His Due, from Samantha D. by Crypto Clarence. He was bred in New York by Elizabeth R. Jerkins, owned by the Hardwick Stable, trained by Alan Jerkins. Spite the Devil, very interestingly, was the horse that had run second in two stakes races for New York breds last year behind a colt named Funny Side, who on that same afternoon, only about an hour later, was of course going to be carrying his colors to glory in Kentucky. Spite the Devil covers the flat mile of the 124th Weathers in 135 and 4. We're going to continue with one more stake. From New York on Sunday, the King's Point for New York bred $75,000 on offer for the older horses at a mile and an eighth. Let's head back to the Big A in the running of the King's Point. And they're off. Union One gets out of there first, but Sophisticated Man hustled out of there as well. Mr. Determined has that inside post and rushes up from the rail. But it's Sophisticated Man who outruns them into the first turn. Mr. Determined down to his inside, now going up with him. Just in behind, it's Katridis Nuff, who tracks in third early. Union One is well held in fourth, followed closely by Netcong, who's on hold early as well. Lord of the Thunder bides his time at the back of the pack in the early going as Mr. Determined takes them along into the backstretch run after a quarter and 23 and four-fifths seconds. Sophisticated Man now sitting back, rating in second. Katridis Nuff is third. And then it's Union One who continues very eagerly, reserved by Jose Santos in fourth position, just off the rail that allows Lord of the Thunder to get through on the inside of Union One. On the far outside, Net Kong, the last in a tight pack, the half one in 48 and two fifth seconds. There's only four lengths from front to back at the half mile pole. Mr. Determined ahead, sophisticated man right alongside. Lord of the Thunder moves through on the inside of Katridis Nuff. Union One still about three and a half lengths from the lead. Net Kong is now asked for run. Around the far turn, Mr. Determined ahead, three furlongs to go. Sophisticated Man now asked for more run. Sophisticated Man and Mr. Determined. Just to their outside, Katra Desnuff. Lord of the Thunder looms in behind a wall of horses approaching the top of the stretch. And there's clear running on the far outside for Union One, who's coming on now. Off the turn, into the stretch, Katra Desnuff brushed at the top of the lane. It's still Mr. Determined a narrow lead. Lord of the Thunder charging on through to the front. Lord of the Thunder is the leader. Mr. Determined second. Union One now sputtering. Down to the finish. Lord of the Thunder, who muscled his way off the inside for running room and pulls clear through the lane to win by five on the wire. Mr. Determined second and Union One third. 
Lord of the Thunder, getting his first stakes win, interestingly enough. This is a horse that has been uh, knocking around in the New York bred conditions for a while. A very nice four-year-old uh, has spent some time in with the open company types, moves in with the New York breads after a nice second behind Sarland last time out, picking up a four-plus length win for Mr. Determined is Union One, who switches back and forth very efficiently between turf and dirt, picks up the third spot under Jose Santos. The winner, Lord of the Thunder, a dark bay or brown four-year-old son of St. Bellato from a start by Deputy Minister, was bred by Barbara Brewer in New York. Owned by Paranex Stable, trained by Jennifer Peterson, and ridden to victory by Javier Castellano. Lord of the Thunder covers the mile in an eighth and 149 and two. We are going to pause for a brief message, and when we return, we'll be heading to Kentucky and taking a look at a week's worth of stakes racing action. Please stay with us. The New York Breeding and Racing Program salutes three multiple stakes winners. Here's multiple grade one winner, Critical Eye. Her earnings topped a million dollars. And thanks to the New York Breeding Program, her breeder and owner each received an additional $80,000 plus in awards. Jet Humus Blue picked up a lot of green, more than $800,000 in purses. And on top of that, combined New York Breeding Program awards to her owner, breeder, and stallion owner exceeded a quarter million dollars. Save Florida Sandy, winner of five graded stakes. He's the all-time New York bread money earner with over $2 million. Plus, the New York Breeding Program has paid out an incredible total of more than a half million dollars in owner, breeder, and stallion owner awards. Critical Eye, Debt You Miss Blue, Safe Florida Sandy, three outstanding New York Reds, just three of the many examples of why you should get with the program. Welcome back to Horses and Courses, everyone. Next, we're going to be heading to Churchill Downs, starting out with last Thursday's running of the Manzel, $100,000 on offer for three and up fillies and mares sprinting on the turf. Let's head to Kentucky in the running of the Manzel. Off and running in the Manzel. Sharp start for Colonial Glitter. She sprung out on top. Leslie's Love and Senorita Ziggy are right there. Full spectrum charges up third on the outside. Steaming home fourth. Timeless Love fifth and Crystal C. Dixie Tactics is gaining to the outside of Repository. And Senorita Ziggy on the fritz at the back of the pack. Around the turn they go. Senorita Ziggy a neck in front. Leslie's Love second. Full spectrum tracks from third. Dixie Tactics is gaining up into fourth. Crystal C is at the hedge racing fifth by two. Repository's on the far outside. By the quarter 21 and 4 and they turn for home Senorita Ziggy three parts of a length in front now Leslie's Love at the edge is second full spectrum picking up the top pair stride by stride Dixie Tactics on the outside and repository final for long full spectrum powering to the front and going away by two and Senorita Ziggy fighting it out for second with Crystal C but it's full spectrum impressive in winning the Mamsell going away by three to Crystal C second and Senorita Ziggy was third in 56 flat. Full spectrum and Cal Burrell, local horse, local uh, rider getting the job done by two and three quarter lengths. Front running near the pace every step of the way. Crystal C did have a little bit of a slow start, ended up wide picking up the second spot as Senorita Ziggy pressing the pace in the early part of the race did weaken just a bit late. Favorite in the field, Repository running off the board after a bit of a bumpy start making a move five wide. But if you blow the start at the, uh, the beginning of these five furlong races, it does leave you with a lot to do. The winner, Full Spectrum, is a four-year-old Bay filly, a daughter of Broad Brush from Rainbow's Classic by Regal Classic. Interesting pedigree, ironic pedigree for a horse that wins going short on the turf. Bred in Ontario, Canada by the Sam Sun Farm and owned by the Phoebe Miller Trust, trained by Tom Amos and ridden to victory by Cal Burrell. Full Spectrum covers the five furlongs on the turf in 56 seconds flat. Heading back to Churchill now for the running of the La Troyenne Stakes, a grade $300,000 event for three-year-old Philly sprinters going seven furlongs. Let's head back down to Kentucky in the running of the La Troyenne. Off and running in the La Troyenne. Good start for all. Crow Jane and Fast Cookie to the front. Just Bill Me flashing early speed takes the second spot. Then it's Real Bear, Lovely Sage in the favorite. Final round at the back. Just six off the pace. Up out of the main track they go. Crow Jane in front by head. Just Bill Me from the rail in second. Then Real Bear up the inside. A close up third. On the outside, Fast Cookie in fourth. Lovely Sage in final round. Tipped off the fence and rallies up into it now. Still five links front to back. The quarter 20. 
22 and two. Moving towards the far turn, a half mile to go. Just Bill Me neck in front of Crow Jane on the outside, racing second, Fast Cookie, three wide third. Lovely Sage, fourth, Real Bear, fifth and final round is coming on from the back of the pack around the turn. Just Bill Me neck in front on the outside, Crow Jane racing second, Fast Cookie's revved up into third. Lovely Sage is bottled up on the inside. Final round makes her move, three wide. Here she comes in Real Bear from the back of the pack. It's wide open with a quarter mile to go. Half mile and 45 and one. They turn for home. Fast Cookie short lead final round. Starts to storm home on the far outside. Rails opened up for Lovely Sage. Then Crow Jane final for long. Fast Cookie shaken up by Cornelio Velasquez and Collar by final round on the outside. Final round of the front. Lovely Sage at the rail. Final round just in front. Lovely Sage final round. Wins the La Troyenne by three quarters. Lovely Sage was second. Final round and Jerry Bailey going off as the favorite, picking up the victory here by about a length over Lovely Sage, who was returning off a disappointing try last time out in Louisiana. She had run very well prior to that going into the, the uh, Louisiana Oaks undefeated returns with a rebound effort to finish second as Fast Cookie picking up the third spot here, had a little bit of trouble drifting out just a bit at the start and ended up in a wide position throughout. The winner, final round, is a Bay three-year-old daughter of Stormcat from Profit Column by private account, bred in Kentucky by the Dinwiddie Farm Limited partnership owned by G. Watts Humphrey, trained by Rusty Arnold and, trained by, and ridden to victory by Jerry Bailey. Final round covers the seven furlongs in 122 flat. Heading back down to Churchill for three-year-old fillies, this time going on the turf in the Edgewood Stakes, $100,000, flat mile the distance. Let's return to Kentucky in the running of the Edgewood. A start from Roger Nagel. Off and running in the Edgewood. Unbridled Femme broke on top, joined by Kie Sakura up the inside. And right there is Ebony Breeze splitting the top pair, then three back to Cheryl Smith. Akhnashin second last, and four is Shadows at the back of the pack. Passing the stand, seven eights to go. Kiai Sakura at the hedge leads it. Corners wide, three parts of a length now, a length and a half in front of Ebony Breeze racing second. Unbridled Femme at her nice hold, third by three. Cheryl Smith at the rail racing in fourth, and it's Akhnashin and four is Shadows at the back of the pack. They string out here, Kiai Sakura and Prado running off up front, leading it by six links now, the quarter 23 and one-fifth seconds. And it's Ebony Breeze up the inside, second on Bridal, Femme is third, Cheryl Smith is moving through an opening along the inside, and it's Akhnashin in four his shadows is at the back of the pack, a dozen off the runaway pacemaker with a half mile to run, opening halftime 46 and four-fifth seconds. Kie Sakura leads it clear by four links now as they round the far turn. On Bridal, Femme has moved up on the outside now with Cheryl Cheryl Smith down along the inside. They're followed by on the far outside. Up into the contention comes Forest Shadows now as they wind for the quarter pole. Kiai Sakura, those fast fractions taking their toll. Unbridled Femme pouncing on her from the far outside. Now then it's Ebony Breeze. Cheryl Smith up the inside. Forest Shadows rolling on the far outside. Final for long on Bridled Femme to the front. Kiai Sakura is battling on very gamely on the hedge. Then it's Ebony Breeze third and Forest Shadows on the far outside. To still Unbridled Femme. Kiai Sakura. Here comes Forest Shadows. Forest Shadows in the final jump to win the Edgewood by a head over on Bridal Femme. And Ebony Breeze was third in 135 and one. Forest Shadows, Larry Melanson in a great finish here by a neck over Unbridled Femme with the favorite, another neck back. Ebony Breeze running in the third spot here. A lot of horses running uh, in Kentucky this week, past week, that had been running in Tampa Bay, Ebony Breeze, one of them spending her winter time down there, but ending up picking up a decent third place finish here after being a bit on the wide side. Another close three horse finish, this one going to Forest Shadows, a three-year-old chestnut daughter of Woodman from Dance of Sunshine by Sunshine Forever, bred in Kentucky by John Phillips and Pam Garten, owned by the Phillips Racing Partnership, trained by Albert Stahl, Jr., ridden to victory by Larry Melanson. Forest Shadows covers the flat mile on the turf in 135 and 1. We're going to continue with stakes racing action from Churchill Downs in the Aegon Turf Sprint. This is a grade 3 sprint, $100,000. Once again, we're going five furlongs. Let's head back to Kentucky in the running of the Aegon Turf Sprint. All in line. 
off and running in the Aegon turf spread more luck like a rocket to the front and quickly joined by Bop up between horses and Mighty Bow on the inside. To back to Airborne Command racing fourth, Abdarians racing fifth, fiscally speaking, on the far outside. Then testify to further back to Red Lightning, no jacket required, the nuclear debate and devil time at the back of the pack around the turn they go. It's Mighty Bow, three parts of a length in front of Bop on the outside. They drill that quarter 21 and three. Then it's a gap of three to Abdarian up the inside, gaining some ground. He's followed by Morlock on the outside, who re-rallies, fiscally speaking, in striking range now. Then it's Airborne Command and a gap of three to testify in the stretch drive. A battle royal down the stretch. Mighty Bow's got a short lead from Bop on the attack with Abdarian along the inside and Titan. Morlock's gearing it up. On the far outside comes, fiscally speaking, down to the final strides. Morlock hits the front, fiscally speaking, lunging at him. Fiscally speaking, got his nose in front at the wire. Morlock second, another photo for third. Fiscally speaking, John Court, another close finish this one by a head over a game. Morlock, well-traveled uh, oldster, has been a fixture on the Midwest circuit for a long time, but just missing here as Fiscally speaking, who did have a little bit of trouble at the start, was wide and just got there at 47 to 1. You can do some fiscal planning if you happen to have a play on this guy on top. Uh, Testify, another horse that's always been a consistent turf sprinter down in Kentucky. I believe won this race last year, rallied from well off the pace to finish third. The winner, fiscally speaking, is a gelded chestnut son of Belong to Me from Tuesday evening by No Double, bred in Kentucky by Janice Whittem. Owned by Janice Whittem, trained by Carl Masker, and ridden to victory by John Court. Fiscally speaking, covers the five furlongs of the Aegon Turf Sprint in 56 seconds flat. Continuing with Friday Stakes Racing action from Churchill Downs, the Louisville Breeders' Cup Handicap, a grade two for older fillies and mares, going a mile in a 16th. Unfortunately, scratched uh, out of this race in the early part of the day was Take Charge Lady. Let's head back down to Kentucky and the running of the Louisville Breeders' Cup Handicap. They're all in line there, off in the Louisville Breeders' Cup Handicap. You breaks right on top. Fly Borboletta flashing speed. She'll press her from the outside. Then 747 on the outside is third. Majority Whip tucks in and red and golds at the rail around the first turn. Tightly packed group here. And the pace is honest. You leads it by an neck to Fly Borboletta. Next by two. Red and gold at the fence up into third. Majority Whip is fourth. And 747, three wide and four off the pace of the back of the pack as they wheel onto the back side. You with constant pressure from Fly Borboletta on the outside. And there's stride for stride by two and a half more to red and gold up the inside there then majority whip and seven four seven quarter was solid 23 and one down to the half mile pole they go fly borbelette and larry melanson getting a neck in front of you and jerry bailey right there along the inside and they kick back and there's still noses apart then a gap of three back to majority whip seven four seven along the outside and red and gold is nudged along at the back of the pack now by edgar prado around the turn with three eights to go half and 45 and for the tempo quickening there. It's Fly Borbelletta head in front now. A view along the inside. Second by seven more. And in third place is 747. Whips out on her. Then Majority Whip and a gap of three to a driving red and gold as they wind for the quarter pole. Match race past the quarter pole. They head for home. You set down by Jerry Bailey. Fly Borbelletta and Larry Melanson clings to her to the outside. Five back to 747. Third final for long. And you asserts herself and takes the lead and draws away. Accelerates clear now from Fly Borboletta left in her wake second. That is seven four seven third. But you going on to a big effort here. You rolling on to win the Louisville Breeders' Cup, going away by a widening seven lengths to Fly Borboletta and seven four seven third in one forty three and one. You picking up the victory here. No surprise. Heavy odds on choice here. Seven and three quarter lengths the better of Fly Borboletta. Early uh, pace setter in here, you got to the front without too much trouble. Fly Barbalita did stick her head in front a little bit up the back stretch, but it was really not much of a nervous moment as Jerry Bailey simply let out a notch and uh, multiple grade one winner, you took command. Uh, it did appear going into this race that Take Charge Lady would have been her major foe off of a terrific effort behind Azari last time out. Unfortunately, it was not to be. Uh, with, uh, with the scratch, it left you pretty much the dominant filly in here. Fly Barbalita finishing a good second with 7-4-7 seven, seven back in the third spot, but uh, it was quite a margin uh, of, uh, of victory here for the winner. 
the winner, you, a dark bay or brown four-year-old daughter of you and I from our Danny by Home Builder, was bred in Kentucky by Dolphus Morrison, owned by Edmund Gann, trained by Bobby Frankel, ridden by Jerry Bailey. You covers the mile in the 16th of the Louisville Breeders' Cup Handicap in 143 and 1. Heading on to the turf and next for the Crown Royal American Turf, a grade $300,000 event for three-year-olds going a mile and a 16th. Let's head back down to Kentucky and the Crown Royal American Turf. In the gate. Off and running in the Crown Royal American Turf, the 10 Fufa's Warrior broke in the air. Alex Commander to the front at the hedge. Imitation is second and Senior Swinger. Third, Hot Hand came away in fourth. Remind is next. Rapid proof. They line up across the track here. Tori and Zim's on the extreme outside looking to tuck in and save some ground. Then five back to Marsh. California, the slow starting Fufa's Warrior at the back. At least a dozen off the lead. Now that clubhouse turn. Alex Commander and Lonnie Mesh three quarters in front of Remind on the outside racing second imitation is box in at the moment third rapid proof moves up three wide to take the third spot now by that hot hand is tugging hard under cornelio velasquez behind those tory and zims got six to make up senior swingers in mid pack followed up by marsh then californian and fufa's warrior continues at the back of the pack a dozen links off the lead the opening halftime was 46 and four moving towards the far turn remind is turning up the pressure on long shot alex commander now imitation crying out for his seam up the inside still bottled up rapid proof to that one's outside and it's hot hand in the leading group as well five back to Tory and Zim senior swingers being worked on now by Pat Day has got eight to make up Marsh is advancing steadily through an opening on the inside and Californian at the back of the pack with Fufa's warrior to the top of the lane remind taking the lead off the turn Alex commander driving along the inside rapid proof is right there imitation has clear sailing he's not good enough at the moment hot hand is next in the far side senior swingers starts to Roll. Senor Swinger's coming fast. Remind a short lead. Senor Swinger is surging on him. Remind digs in. Senor Swinger to the front. Senor Swinger and Pat Day winning it. Going away. Senor Swinger by three over Remind. Then it was Fufa's Warrior running a big one for third in 140. One and one. Senor Swinger and Pat Day. This was a horse who was, uh, until only about a week or so ago, considered a possible candidate for the Kentucky Derby. Sold earlier on this year, arriving in the barn of Bob Baffert. But uh, they decided to go for the more conservative route. Try him on the turf. The pedigree is there. And he ended up with a huge effort here. Two and a half lengths, the better of the favored Remind, who was involved every step of the way. Fufa's Warrior, who we last saw in the Illinois Derby, another one switching on to the turf, picking up the third spot with a big off-the-pace rallying move. The winner, Senor Swinger, is a grayer roan three-year-old son of El Prado from Smooth Swinger by Chris S., bred by Bob Ackerman in Kentucky, owned by Bob and Beverly, as they're familiarly known, Mr. and Mrs. Robert Lewis, trained by Bob Baffert and ridden to victory by Pat Day. Senior Swinger covers the mile and a 16th on the Louisville turf in 141 and 1. The big event on Friday afternoon's card, of course, the Grade 1 Kentucky Oaks, a half a million dollars for three year old fillies going a mile and an eighth. Let's head back down to Kentucky in the running of the Oaks. All in line. Off and running in the Kentucky Oaks. It's a fast start for L.O. Love up the inside. Lady Tack broke perfectly. My Boston gal will join the fray with Tempest. Fugit the long shot up on the outside. Island Fashion up into the fourth spot now. Yells racing fifth. Go for Glamour. Up the inside gets the rail run in Santa Catarina. They're followed up by Holiday Lady who rides the rail. Five links off the pace. Go for Glamour. Put in some tight quarters along the inside. Santa Catarina gains three wide. Then it's Birdtown, Atlantic Ocean, and two back to in case of wind. A dozen off the lead. Almost single file out of the backside. Ello Love and Robbie Alvarado and Eck. Tempest Fugit pressing the pace. The long shot under Shane Sellers in second. My Boston gal tugs hard in third. Island Fashion fourth. Lady Tack fifth. Yells got seven to make up. Santa Catarina's in mid pack now, followed by Birdtown. And it's two back to Atlantic Ocean. Holiday Lady nudged along early. Three back to go for Glamour. And in case of win, the long shot at the back of the pack. Half and 46 seconds flat. Moving towards the far turn. It's Ello Love. Three parts of a length in front. 
Blood. Tempest Fugit right there second. Lady Tack up to join the top pair in third. My Boston gal shuffle back and forth. She's bottled up at the moment now. And there goes Santa Catarina. And she's picking off Phillies one by one. Yeld follows her into stride. Island Fashion up with a fighting chance now. And Birdtown gets involved at Atlantic Ocean. Santa Catarina up to take a lead. Past the quarter pull by ahead. Lady Tack digs in. Ella Love has something left in the tank. She's set down by Alvarado. And three across the track as they head for home. Santa Catarina. Lady Tack game between. Whips out now on Ella Love. Far outside. Birdtown comes on. Birdtown on the outside forging a short lead. Birdtown to the front past the eighth pole under Edgar Prado. And Birdtown is drawing away. Birdtown upsetting the Kentucky Oaks at 18 to 1. Birdtown wins by a widening three to Santa Catarina. Then yell and Ella Love. And the time was 148 and 3. Big upset here as Birdtown takes the uh, the Kentucky Oaks with an off the pace move, three and a quarter length victory over Santa Catarina, who only had one prep leading into this race. That was an allowance in California. Yell, another difficult trip for this filly, uh, having had uh, some trouble at the start. She was checked sharply in the first turn, did uh, get forced in just a little bit and uh, had really another difficult trip, ends up in the third spot here, but no match for the winner. Ello Love did show the way in the early going, but was not able to maintain the type of advantage that she had last time out in the Ashland. After coming under a little bit more pressure early, Ello Love folds up and finishes in the fourth spot. Favorite in the field was Lady Tack, who really never got uh, out of uh, her own way. She did have a little bit of trouble at the beginning of this race, but uh, was uh, did have uh, really no excuse past that, although uh, having to take up sharply, certainly going into the first turn, did not make things any easier for her. A nice trip for Birdtown, was able to get a uh, relatively clear start after, a relatively clear trip after a bit of a stumbling start under Edgar Prado, who was able to guide her to a nice victory. The winner, Birdtown, a bay three-year-old daughter of Cape Town from Dear Birdie by Stormberg, was bred in Kentucky by Mary Lou Whitney Stable. Owned by Mrs. Whitney, trained by Nick Zito, ridden to victory by Edgar Prado. Birdtown covers the mile in an eighth of the Kentucky Oaks in 148 and three. We're going to pause now for one more brief message, and when we return, a series of exciting stakes races culminating with the Kentucky Derby. Please stay with us. We are just beginning to feel the effect of real first-class breeding in the state. Over the next few years, there's going to be a tremendous improvement in the quality of horses in New York State. That prediction has become a reality. Today, the New York Breeding and Racing Program gives breeders and owners their best opportunity for success. When you get those breeders checks and I get stallion checks and I get open owners checks, it's unbelievable. It's great. When you breed a good horse in New York, its extra earnings power just resonates throughout the industry. When you go to the sales and there's two horses side by side and you like them both and one's a New York bred, the New York bred just starts with a tremendous advantage. When I look at a catalog and I'm looking at individuals, if he's a New York bred, that's the bonus plan for me. Simply, it's the best program in North America, bar none. I would advise anybody to get a New York bred. It's a lot of rewards there, a lot of potential rewards, and we're proof of it right here. It sure has developed into a lucrative program, and the people who thought of this 20-plus years ago were very insightful. Welcome back, everyone, to Horses and Courses. We're going to continue with Saturday stakes racing action from Churchill Downs, kicking things off the Churchill Downs Handicap, a grade two, seven furlongs for older horses. Let's head to Churchill and the running of the Churchill Downs Handicap. Oh. Off and running in the Churchill Downs. It's Lord Abounding springing out on top and pass rushes flashing good early speed along the inside. He's joined up between horses now quickly by Twilight Road flashing speed and Cappuccino as well. But it's Twilight Road to get a neck in front. On the outside, Lord Abounding will pressure him from second. Cappuccino third pass rush up the inside fourth. Proud citizen and striking ranger. They just three off him and inching up into it. The Wildcat is next by three more. To Swift replica peeping top on the inside. They're followed by Mountain General, a gap of three back to Bin the Best and all the Baron, and a gap of five back to Arbaggio at the back. He's 14 off the lead. Opening quarter 22 and two around the turn. Lord Abounding has gotten away under Mark Gidry by better than two to Twilight Road Racing. Second proud citizen on the outside. Third pass rushes racing. Fourth Cappuccino is tucked in in fifth place with replicas on the far outside. He's launching a nice rally now. And behind that has been the best looking for a seam to 
slip through and they head for home. Lord Abounding is still clear by two to Twilight Road and Swift Replicas on the outside. All the Baron on the far outside coming on down to the final furlong. Lord Abounding is full bore and he's called it by All the Baron on the far outside. All the Baron to hit the front and he's drawing away. All the Baron and Jerry Bailey winning the Churchill Downs handicap by three to pass rush. Second tight for third peeping Tom or Cappuccino in one twenty one and four. Alda Baron, Jerry Bailey, a horse that has had a bit of a case of seconditis throughout his career, but seems to have really put things together this season, picking up a two and a half length victory over Pass Rush. A horse that earlier this season uh, really looked like a, uh, a potential star in the older horse division with a big win out in California, did go to the sidelines. A nice effort here, dropping back to sprinting. And Cappuccino, big surprise at almost 80 to 1, picking up the third spot after having a little bit of steadying trouble down on the rail. A solid effort uh, at three horses finishing a neck or so apart in the uh, looking, all looking for the play spot, peeping Tom rallying as usual from far off the pace. But uh, Aldebaran clear two and a half lengths and a very nice performance here. Beginning the stakes day for Mr. Frankel and Mr. Bailey very successfully. Aldebaran is a five-year-old bay horse, the son of Mr. Prospector from Chimes of Freedom by private account. He was bred in Kentucky by Flaxman Holdings. He is owned by Flaxman and trained by Bobby Frankel. Written to victory by Jerry Bailey, Aldebaran covers the seven furlongs of the Churchill Downs handicap in 121 and 4. Heading back to Kentucky now, of course, for the Three Chimneys Juvenile $100,000 sprint for the babies, two-year-olds. Let's head back down to Kentucky in the Three Chimneys Juvenile. All set. Off and running in the Three Chimneys Juvenile. Fast start for East Bay up the inside quickly. Limehouse is right there. Fashion Girl gets her neck in front. El Cisco Kid flashing good speed up into fourth. Heckles in mid-pack racing fifth. The neck to I'd be a lady in three. Back to Korsakov at the back of the pack around the turn. El Cisco Kid and Jamie Bruin taking a short lead. Heckle charging up the challenge on the outside. Fashion Girl holds that rail spot in third. Limehouse is racing fourth with three to make up at this point. Whips out now on East Bay up the inside. The Nine Beal Lady in Korsakov comes on from the back of the pack to the top of the lane. Quarter 22 seconds flat of the stretch drive. Whips out on El Cisco Kid. A neck in front. Heckle up to that run. Throat latch now. Limehouse up the inside. Down to the final furlong. Limehouse is charging up the inside. El Cisco Kid holding tough. Limehouse goes on by to take the lead under Robbie Alvarado. And Limehouse gets up to win the Three Chimneys Juvenile going away a length and a half to a very game El Cisco Kid, tight for third, either East Bay or Heckle. Limehouse slipping through down inside. The, uh, the other part of the uh, dogwood combination here, Heckle, was the part that everybody really liked, but it was Limehouse able to get the victory by a length and a quarter. Robbie Alvarado at six and a half to one. First time starter, El Cisco Kid, going to the front, looking like he was going to go gate to wire at 24 to one. Held on for a second. East Bay picking up the third spot with an off the pace move as Heckle who was sharp uh, in the early part of the race, came up a little bit short after being spun a bit wide on the turn. Disappointing was Korsakov, who had been a very impressive maiden victor in the slop at Keeneland earlier on this season. The winner, Limehouse, is a two-year-old chestnut son of Grand Slam from Dixieland Blues by Dixieland Band. He was bred in Florida by Cheryl Curtin, owned by the Dogwood Stable, trained by Todd Pletcher, and ridden to victory by Robbie Alvarado. Limehouse covers the five furlongs in 57 and 2. Heading back to Kentucky now for the running of the Sitco Distaff Turf Mile. Phillies and Mares going in grade 3 company. Flat Mile on the turf. Let's head down to Kentucky in the Sitco Distaff Turf Mile. Off and running in the Sitco Distaff Turf Mile. Presumed Innocent springs out on top to take the lead. Mimi's Tizzy on the far outside. Flashing speed. Pina Colada came away third. Then Bag of Stars racing four straight from Texas. Gains on the outside. Quick tip up into the leading group. Then it's Salty Pharma followed by Pina Colada. Maliziosa rides the edge and saves all the ground. They're followed up by Dedication. Sentimental Value is second last by three. And Heat Hayes at the back of the pack around the first turn. Presumed Innocent has gotten away to a lonely lead. 
lead in front by three through the quarter, 23 and two fifths seconds. Bag of Stars in second. Mimi's Tizzy races third straight from Texas is fourth on the outside. Quick Tip has got seven to make up. Pina Colada moves up at the hedge. Now they're followed by Salty Farmer. Then it's Dedication on the outside. Sentimental Value. Then Maliziosa next to length and a half. And Heat Hayes continues at the back of the pack, moving towards the far turn. Half and 46 and two. Presumed innocent. Now looks so at 48 to one. Has opened up by four lengths now. Bag of Stars is racing second. Salty Farmer's on the outside with straight from Texas next, gaining three wide. Quick Tips on the move on the far outside as they wind for the quarter pole. Presumed innocent. Set down by Alex Solis and leading it by a length and a half. Bag of Stars. Quick Tip is rolling on the outside. Pina Colada's at the fence. On the outside comes Sentimental Value. And Heat Hayes is rolling from the back of the pack. Quick Tip to the front in mid-stretch. Here comes Heat Hayes on the far outside. Heat Hayes with a burst of speed to take the lead past the 16th pole. And Heat Hayes drawing away to win the Sitco Distaff Turf Mile by two. Quick Tip was second, then sentimental value and dedication in 139 and four. Keith Hayes and Jose Valdivia. Philly's last try was a huge effort on the downhill turf course, taking nicely to the firm conditions here and romping by a length and a half. Very sharp effort from Quick Tip, who was always there or about. Seems like she never misses the board. Finishing second, sentimental value at eight and a half to one, picking up the third spot with a big off the pace rallying move. Dedication did uh, go off as the favorite at just over two to one. Sat uh, kind of a pocket trip behind horses in the early part of the race, did swing out, but was a little bit flat running between horses late in the going. The winner, Heat Hayes, a dark bay or brown four-year-old filly, a daughter of Green Desert from Hasili by Chaosi, was bred in Great Britain by Judmont Farm. Owned by Judmont, trained by Bobby Frankel, ridden to victory by Jose Valdivia Jr. Heat Hayes covers the flat mile on the firm turf in 133 and 4. Heading back to Kentucky now for the running of the Humana Distaff, a longtime fixture on the Kentucky Derby card this year, made a grade one. Phillies and mares going seven furlongs. Let's head down to Churchill in the running of the Humana Distaff. All in line, off and running, and the Humana Distaff Handicap Rocket start for Flax and Flyer, and she takes the lead from Gold Mover up the inside second. Sightseek is right there, racing third. Spring Meadow, then Miss Lodi, Slew's final answer. Palmarola and 61 Margo up the backside they go. Flax and Flyer and Kent DeSormo, three parts of a length in front of Slew's final answer. Second, Miss Lodi now takes the second spot by ahead. They're well bunched. Gold Mover's up the inside, but she's bottled up at the moment. Sightseek right to her outside flank now and they're followed by 61 Margo Palmarola second last just four lengths off the pace and neck in front of Spring Meadow at the back of the pack the quarter 22 and two around the turn Flax and Flyer easy fractions up front three parts of a length in front tackle by Miss Lodi and her outside Slew's final answer gold movers waiting for a seam and nudged along by Prado now and pass by Sightseek who takes the four spot to farther back to 61 Margo then Spring Meadow and two more to Palmarola at the back of the pack to the top of the lane half in 45 and two and they sprint for home Miss Lodi with a neck in front Sightseek is splitting Phillies and bullying her way through now here comes Sightseek and Jerry Bailey through with a powerful rush to take the lead past the eighth pole and Sightseek accelerates away by two to Miss Lodi gold mover coming out of the far outside Sightseek is clear Sightseek another stakes winner for Frankel wins by five gold mover in a tight photo with Miss Lodi for second in 122 flat Sightseek uh, earning her first grade one victory in a dominant performance here looked at the top of the stretch to be fully blocked by a wall of horses but was able to get through slipping between rivals gold mover who was down on the inside and a bit farther back than she usually likes to run in the early part of the race did end up having to take far to the outside to run second miss lodi who was one of the horses that had Sightseek blocked uh, at the top of the stretch, held on very nicely to pick up the third spot after running in the chasing role behind Flax and Flyer in the early part of the race. The winner, Sightseek, is a chestnut four-year-old daughter of Distant View from Viviana by Nuriev. She was bred in Kentucky by Judd Montfarm, owned by the breeder, trained by Bobby Frankel, ridden to victory by Jerry Bailey, who had a combination having a terrific day on the Derby undercard Sightseek covers the seven furlongs of the Humana Distaff in 122 flat. Continuing leading up to the Kentucky Derby, the final pre-Derby race, the Woodford Reserve Turf Classic, a grade one mile and an eighth for the older horses on the grass. Let's head back to Kentucky in the running of the Woodford Reserve Turf Classic. 
from Roger Nagel. Off and running in the Woodford Reserve Turf Classic. Good even start. Rouvre to the front early. By an act of patrol on the outside with anticipation. Broke well, but he's wrangled back now. Century City even the scorer on the far outside with Honor and Warren. In behind that comes Perfect Drift. At the back of the pack, Riquette trails. Passing the stands, it's Patrol and Cornelio Velasquez. Three parts of a length in front. Even the scorer and Shane Sellers off his flank to the outside. Tracking second. Honor and Warren is four off the pace. Third, Rouvre rides the head in fourth by five more to perfect Drick a neck in front now century city on the outside and the great with anticipation he's second last today under pat day and a length in front of Riquette at the back of the pack as they wheel onto the backside. opening quarter 24 and one fifth seconds patrol leads the way tugging hard a length and a half in front rouvre tracking off his heels second even the scores in third honor in war fourth perfect drift is splitting horses and coming on now century city's on the far outside they're followed by Riquette and the gray with anticipation Anticipation at the back of the field that's bunching up past the half mile pole now. Now just seven links front to back as they hit the far turn. The half in 47 and four. Patrol leads it from Rouvre right there, turning up the pressure second. Even the scores on the outside, racing in third. Then Honor and War up the inside. He'll need a seam. Perfect drift is next, followed up by Century City on the outside with anticipation. Is scrubbed on at the back of the pack with Raquette and a stretch drive. It's Patrol off the turn in front by a length. Honor and War has clear safety and he's up to tackle him from the outside. Riquette is charging at the hedge, then Perfect Drift with anticipation coming on too late. It's Honor and War and David Flores opening up a length and a half. Patrol on the inside second, then Riquette. Honor and War is clear. Honor and War at 24 to one. Upsets the Woodford Reserve Turf Classic by a length and three quarters. Riquette second and Patrol third in 146 and three. Honor and War pulling off a big upset here. This is a horse that had been running against far lesser company, moving into grade one stakes, uh, kind of on a whim. The con con connections decided the, they were going to move him up into stakes company. Why not move him up here? A uh, couple of reasons to uh, think some of the favorites were vulnerable. They were an Honor and War sprinting clear after uh, being involved fairly close to the pace under David Flores. Sprinting clear at 24 to 1 by a length and a quarter from Requette, who made up a little bit of ground uh, late in the going down inside. Patrol, the early pace setter, held on for the third spot with anticipation. A little bit dull behind horses, was a little bit wide. A horse whose first race back has not often been his very, very best. I would imagine a little bit better to come from uh, the old champ next time out. The winner, Honor in War, is a chestnut four-year-old son of Lord at War from Catumbella by Diocese, was bred in Kentucky by Mill Ridge Farm and W, and w Lazy T Limited. He is owned by the Third Turn Stable, trained by Paul McGee, ridden to victory by David Flores. Honor in War covers the mile and an eighth at Churchill Downs in 146 and three. One more race left on the program, and it is, of course, the Grade 1 Kentucky Derby. A million dollars for the three-year-olds going a mile and a quarter. It's that first Saturday in May. Let's head back down to Churchill Downs in the running of the Kentucky Derby. Off and running in Derby 129. Brancusi broke right on top down the center. Lone Star Sky Peace Rules broke extremely well. Then Super Blitz is up the inside. And they're joined by Eye of the Tiger on the far outside. Scrimshaw early into stride. In behind that, up the inside is Funny Side. They pass the stands for the first time. Brancusi has a neck in front. Peace Rules on the outside right there. Second under a nice hold. And then on the inside, it's Funny Side racing third. Eye of the Tiger loops up to his outside. Fourth, Scrimshaw's on the far outside. Indian Express couldn't get to the front. He's caught in tight quarters and jostled around early by domestic dispute. And Super Blitz on the inside of the favorite Empire Maker. A gap of two back to Awfully Wild. They're followed up by That's What I'm Talking About along the inside. Three wide comes ten most wanted. Buddy Gills about a dozen off the pace early. Behind that comes out of here. And it's a gap of a couple farther back to Lone Star Sky at the back of the pack. Ten cents a shine up the backside in the Derby. Half and 46 and one. Strong fractions on up front. Brancusi leads it a neck. Pressed hard by Peace Rules. He sticks his nose in front. And two back to long shot. Funny side in third. Eye of the Tiger nudged along early in fourth place. Up the inside. Indian Express is making headway. And Domestic Dispute is going right with him now. Scrimshaw in with a fighting chance at this point. On the far outside comes Empire Maker. He's five off the pace 
Jason Bailey says go. He's starting to roll now. A fella awfully wild. Ten most wanted's on the outside. That's what I'm talking about. Buddy Gill still got ten or more to make up. And Super Blitz at the top of the lane of the Derby. Peace rules in front by an egg. The funny side on the outside second. Empire Maker makes his move on the far outside. And here he comes and they turn for home. Empire Maker set down by Bailey. Peace rules digs in along the inside. Funny side in between the top pair. Funny side has got a head in front. Peace rules full bore on the inside. Empire Maker far outside. It's Peace from Funny side just in front. Peace rules on the inside and Empire Maker. Funny side looking to upset the Derby. Funny side at 12 to 1. Wins it by a length and three quarters to the Frankel entry. Empire Maker was second and then Peace rules and that's what I'm talking about. Certainly an exciting finish and an especially exciting finish for the local connections here with Funny Side, a New York state bred gelding picking up the victory under Jose Santos. Many local connections here, of course, uh, the Sacatoga Stables partners, at least a couple of them here in the greater Capital District area with Jackson Knowlton and Lou Titterton, both amongst them. Just an exciting day for New York and for the New York program and a terrific race by Funny Side. Outstanding performance by Jose Santos sitting just off the early pace behind Brancusi and Peace Rules. Peace Rules, a terrific effort by this horse. And again, not unlike Funny Side, a horse that uh, many people thought would be compromised by that final eighth of the mile did end up running very, very well to finish third as Empire Maker made a large bid on the outside. Looked like he was going to go by the entire field, but came up flat as a dead game funny side. Refused to give in and ended up prevailing by a length and three quarters at over 12 to 1 with Empire Maker having to settle for the second spot as the 5-2 to two favorite. Peace Rules, again, a very nice effort from Peace Rules to finish in the third spot. That's what I'm talking about, a bit of a troubled trip, but ended up rallying very nicely into the fourth spot. I would think that uh, with a little bit clearer trip, he may very well have hit the board. It was a very close three-way photo finish for the play spot, but no doubt about the winner. The winner, funny side, the New York state bred chestnut gelding, son of distorted humor from Get Bell's good side by Sluicide, was bred by the Windstar Farm, but fold right here in the Capital District area at McMahon Thoroughbreds in Saratoga. Bred by Windstar in New York, he is owned by Sacatoga Stables, trained by Barkley Tag, starting his very first Kentucky Derby and getting the win right off the bat. Jose Santos, a terrific ride on Funny Side, covering the mile and a quarter at Churchill Downs on the first Saturday in May in just a tick or so over the official time here in uh, fifth of a seconds is 2.01 even. It came out to 2.01.19 for the official final time in hundreds of a second for the Kentucky Derby, the 10th fastest running in the history of the Derby. Terrific effort by Funny Side. Certainly, we here at uh, Capital OTV would like to say thank you and congratulations to everyone involved in Funny Side for an exciting afternoon for us, certainly for you. We do uh, hope that we'll have continued success with Funny Side. He has been a terrific, terrific horse to follow here at Capital and for all of the New York racing fans. That wraps up a very busy weekend here at Horses and Courses. Thank you all for joining us this week. We hope you'll be able to join us next time taking a look at stakes racing action from all around the country. For everyone here at Capital OTV, thanks for watching. I'm Jean Wood, and I'll see you back here next time.